Well, it's great to see you again, and as we said, it's all about you. So now here in Lesson 4, we are going to talk about learning. This is an important part. Now, we've been down the road so far. We've talked about focus. We've talked about action. We've talked about innovation. They all come together, as I'm sure you by now are figuring out. This is not a linear approach. This is basically kind of exponential. It's like a spider web. It all starts to fit together. It all starts to come back together. But these are key components within that spider web. Okay. So what we're going to talk about today, again, is learning. Uh, just to give you a brief overview and a quick look, you know, we want you to conceive an open mind. The people who are tremendously successful are the people who are open-minded. Close-minded people have no success whatsoever. I mean, I hate to make a statement like that. I really hate to say that because I don't believe anything's impossible. But usually close-minded people are tremendously negative. They tend to blame everybody else for their failure. They tend to look at other people outside themselves, and they tend to be somewhat ignorant of everything around them. So when they're unaware, they stay unaware. They're not interested in becoming aware. The other side of this is it's lifelong. If you're going to be open-minded, you can't just be open-minded for a brief period of time. It's a lifelong scenario. When we graduated from school, they called it commencement. Commencement meant a beginning, not an end. Most people today, they graduate from college, what does it mean? Well, it's over. It's all over. I'm done. I'm finished. No, you're not. You're just starting, okay? So you need to constantly be on the surge for lifelong learning, lifelong self-achievement. Teaching. It's very important because what you learn, you can teach others, and the more you teach, the more you learn yourself. In fact, i got to tell you, I'm doing this course with you, and you know who's getting incredible amount of value from this? Me. I'm probably learning a lot more than a lot of you are learning right now because that's the Socratic method. The more you teach others, the more you learn yourself. This is why public speakers and teachers tend to be so well versed in a lot of things because they've done it for so long, they're constantly teaching themselves. They're constantly learning through teaching. And again, on the review side, we come back to the same commonality of adjustments. You need to make adjustments. Okay, it's never a straight line. And one of the classic sayings I've always read was, an open mind sees opportunities others miss. This is so true, because if you're open-minded, you're searching. You're really looking for things, okay? You're not looking for, to the avoidance side. You know, it has to be a mindset. So a lot of times in failure, what happens is people get focused on what they don't want to have happen. That's an avoidance issue. So again, you tell your mind what you want to avoid. For those golfers out there, how many times have you been on the golf course, lined up the tee, looked at the hole, and saw this huge water trap on the way to the hole? Correct? Yeah. What's the first thing you said? Don't hit the ball in the water. What's the first thing that happened when you swung? Hit the ball right in the water. Because your mind doesn't hear it that way. Your mind hears hit in the water not. Doesn't work. I mean, hit in the water not means hit in the water. Okay, so you can't avoid things. You have to look towards what you want, not what you don't want. It's a learning uh, lesson. It really is. So if you want to also understand who's in control, learning is very important because you empower your own destiny. No one else can control your destiny for you. No one else is going to decide what happens in your life. Really, it looks that way maybe, but it's not the truth. Truth is you empower yourself. It's your destiny. So you need to be, again, we talked about in Lesson 3, being a filled vessel. You need to be a filled vessel. The only way to be a filled vessel is to constantly learn. You need to expand your mind. And the mind is one of the greatest underused and taken for granted by people. As Earl Nightingale said, it was the greatest gift in the world for people to have, free and clear, a computer that far beyond any of today's technology. Your mind is an expansive computer. It can create so much more than you give it credit for. In fact, they say most people only use about 10% of their brain power. I think it's even less, okay? That was a high end. So you, can you imagine that you are using 90% less than you have right now? No matter where you are in life, whether you're tremendously successful or you're tremendously you know, down in the dumps, you're only using 5 to 10%. There's so much more. And you can tap into all of that. So it taps in by endless learning. Okay, again, we discussed graduation is a myth. 
So if you're young and you're watching this course, you just graduated college and you think, wow, life's all in front of me, it's all over, I'm ready to go, you're not. Okay, you need to continue to learn. All that was preparation for you to continue learning in life. You need to start every day with a fresh start. The Socratic methodology is simply this. Socrates taught by asking questions. Socrates never taught in the way, sort of in the method I'm giving you. I'm dispelling information to you. I'm giving it out to you. Socrates would have given it out to you in a thousand questions. So I would have been asking you a thousand questions for you to look into. And we're going to give you that in a written form. Those are questions you need to ask yourself, remember? Good questions, you need to know the answers, okay? Those questions will lead to all your self-development, and teaching is the best learning tool, the ability to teach others. So whatever it is you're going to do, even an entrepreneurial event, you share with others, teach others. The more you gain knowledge, the more you share it out, the more knowledge you start to suck in. It's a very, very uh, interesting process, okay? So you want to teach others, right? You want to coach others. You want to have relationships. If you're in sales, and hopefully we have a lot of sales professionals with us in, in, in our uh, course, it's about relationships. If you're willing to build relationships, you will be magnificently successful. You will definitely bring something, attract financial wealth to yourself. And that's a big part of being financially wealthy, okay? Something larger than yourself. For many, it's God, okay? So we won't go into a long, you know, a, a long, uh, discussion on that it's up to you but something larger than you it needs to be bigger than you something that you can really kind of have faith and follow into your family this is the closest and most treasured relationships you have your friends those are all social today the world's gotten way more social and way more connected your acquaintances eh, a little below friends right maybe acquaintances are just people you know of people you know, you're not going to go out of your way. You're not going to dodge in front of a bullet for an acquaintance. At least, I'm not sure, maybe you will, you know. But those are early stage relationships, and they're fairly non-connected. Okay, but all of these things are part of your life when it makes up your money, your assets, your lifestyle, your life experience. These are all forms of relationships. But it's all about relationships. I heard a lady speaker one time say that life is nothing but relationships. When you core it all down, there's nothing else but relationship, and it's important. Imagine living in a um, prison cell in a little six-by-eight, you know, all alone, solitary confinement. I mean, it'd be a form of torture. Form of torture, imagine. No communication with anybody but yourself. You'd learn so much about yourself in the first 24 hours, you'd be screaming, yelling, you'd be running for the doors if you could get out. So... You need the relationships, but also you need that solitary time, okay? That solitary time will expand your awareness. It'll help you be more aware of what you need to do, what your passion is, where you're going, how you're going to get there, what's your focus, and questions, 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 all the time. In fact, one of the, in Lead the Field, one of Earl Nightingale's great exercises was to simply sit down every single morning and list down 20 questions, 20 important questions for yourself, just 20. Okay, take 15, 20 minutes and list 20 questions and then answer those questions. They could be about your career, your family, your, your spiritual life. It could be about anything you want. Okay, it could be a combination. But those questions will give you more answers than you know what to do with. All right, so we've coming a little bit more together in the spider web. Your focus is clear. When it's clear, your results are assured. Learning is your map, okay? Focus on counterintuitive things. Go where the puck is going to be. And remember that learning is the map. It's the big map that's going to bring you there. And journaling is the steps that keep growing out the map for you. Okay, well, again, it's so good to be with you again today. Uh, I'm looking forward to our next discussion on urgency. And please get with your journal and start doing some work for yourself. Questions, questions, questions.